we can use Stackhawk to scan our application. Essentially, it's a wrapper around the Zap scanner, but it, it also enables a lot of integrations and it puts the results into a dashboard. So it has some advantages over using the plain version of Zap because it it gives you the developer integrations and the DevOps pipeline integrations that are often needed to fully automate these processes and to integrate the application security team with the development team. So you can decide for yourself whether you want to use the free version of Zap, which does a great job, or you can opt to go with something that's uh, more enterprise grade like Stackhawk which is kind of a modern uh, enterprise-grade product as opposed to you know, a full-blown enterprise product like a, a NetSpark or something like that. So we're gonna take a look at how to get Stackhawk working. First of all, when you create your account on Stackhawk, they're gonna create an API key for you. You'll need that in order to integrate with the scans. If you forget what it is, just click on your account down here at the bottom and over in your account settings, you can retrieve your API key from there if you can't remember what it is or you didn't record it when you first created it. Also, you'll need to set up your applications, which is really nothing more than just giving them a name. But when you create an application inside of Stackhawk using the add an app feature, it generates this global unique identifier here for each application that you create. And that's how you tell the scanner which um, application to put the result under. So the application ID for this project here is seen on the screen. And whenever I do a scan, that's how the results end up on this particular dashboard under this application. So we'll need those two pieces of information. We also want to make sure our project is running, of course. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and start the project running so that I have something to scan. And my project is set up inside of this folder, Matilda Docker Hub, and it has the Docker Compose file in it. I'm going to use Docker Compose to get the project running. So I'm going to do the ordinary Docker Compose up dash D for detached, and then Docker Compose will get the website going along with all of its components like the database and LDAP server. With that done, I'm going to go back over into the Stackhawk directory that I've created. Inside the Stackhawk directory, I have the stackhawk.yaml file. This is the file where those pieces of information go to tell the scanner where to put the results. We take a look at the stackhawk.yaml. I've defined the app. In fact, it's the only thing I've defined in this file. It's a very simple um, example. I've got that application ID that I talked about a minute ago. And then I'm indicating which environment I want to put the scan under. If you recall, over here under the applications, I had set up a development environment and a pre-production. So that's what that's referring to is it's going to put it into the the development bucket. And then I have to tell the scanner the location of the application. Now I set up a um, local host application, but I gave it an alias inside of my Etsy host file. So if I go over and look at the uh, host file here, one of the things I did is I just set up some local host entries. But of course, if if this were running under a DNS server or something like that, um, you know, this would be the DNS name. Or you could just put the IP address. So you could, in my case, I could have done HTTP colon slash slash 127001 because it is running on localhost and that would have been okay as well. In any case, you need to point the scanner to your project. Now the YAML file has all kinds of other settings like um, you can put the credentials in order to let the scanner log into the application and other artifacts that you might need to get the scan running correctly. Since our project doesn't require a login, 
we don't have that section in our file here. Another thing I've done is uh, I've scripted up the the scan because I do these scans all the time. You don't need to do this necessarily. It's an option. But one of the things I did is I just wrote a relatively short script that grabs the API key that we talked about. I'm keeping that over in this file here, stockhawk API key dot key. And I just copied and pasted the key from my account into a file. I gave it a name and then I wrote that name down here. And then I also uh, made a note of the directory that Stockhawk, Stockhawk is running out of. This is important. We need to pass this in the command later because we need to tell the scanner where the YAML file is so it can read it, get those application IDs and all that other stuff out. That's what connects all the dots together. The YAML file tells the scanner not only where the application is running, but it also tells it where to send the results via that application ID so that when you go back to your dashboard, the results will show up in the right place. Let's take a look at the command and we'll break it down piece by piece here. So this, this command is going to run Stackhawk, which itself is a Docker container, which is why we're using the Docker run command. The dash rm means to remove the Stackhawk container when it's done. Again, this, this is referring to the, the Stackhawk container, not your container. So like I'm running my containers with Docker Compose. They're not going to be affected by this command. This command is actually going to download and run the Stackhawk container. We don't need the scanner after the scan's complete, so we'll just delete the container to free the space. Dash V here is for volume, and this is where that path comes into play that we looked at earlier. The, the scan is running out of my directory here, Home Jeremy Project Stackhawk. I could have just passed that right there, and then we have a, a colon, and then we have this slash hawk directory. What is that? On the container, the Stackhawk container, there's a folder already there under the root directory slash hawk. And this hawk folder is where the scanner knows to pick up the YAML file from. So what this volume mount does is it mounts my local directory, which has the YAML file in it, and projects that into the hawk directory so that the scanner's container has access to the YAML file without me literally having to put the YAML file onto the container itself. And I'm giving it read write permissions. We have dash E and these are for passing in options, but the critical option is going to be passing in that API key. And so in my case, uh, Put it into a variable but you could literally just paste the api key um, right here where it says redacted api key because the the key that you'll find in your profile is nothing more than a long string you can just put it right there if you wanted to and then we're going to tell it about the host so i'm going to give it an alias of matilda.local and then i'm going to put the actual IP that it's running at. And so that's how we kind of create a host file, if you will, on the container itself. Now, I've got my local host file that I showed you in Etsy host, but that's on my laptop. This creates that same host entry over inside of the scanner. You may not need this, but if you have a, uh, a virtual host sensitive application like I do, you would want to create that mapping. And then we're also going to tell the scanner which network to use, which virtual network. And I'm just telling it to use my um, Docker host network, which is for this situation is going to be the most common option. But there are other options to specify the network. And then we're also going to tell it which scanner to use. And unless there's a good reason, this is always just going to be the latest version of the scanner. If you wanted to specify an older version of the Stackhawk scanner because you didn't want your results to change between runs, then you could 
specify the exact version of the Skyhawk scanner that you wanted to run here instead of using latest, because uh, obviously latest is going to pull down whatever the current version of the scanner is. And if that changed, maybe it improved in some way since the last time you scanned, well, the results could be different, may have less false positives or uh, more true positives, something like that. Right, now that we have everything set up, either you've typed out the command manually or maybe you created this little shell script like I did, then you can go ahead and run the command or run your script. And the first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna pull down the latest version of the scanner or whichever version you specified here um, from Docker Hub. And you'll notice that since I'm using the latest, it's pulling down the brand new copy. So it's, it's once it gets done doing that, it'll actually start to scan. As far as the pull goes, this will take somewhere around five minutes usually, depending on how fast your network connection is. It could be slower or faster, of course, but it does take a while. Now that the pull is complete, the scan is starting. And the scan is going to take anywhere from a couple of minutes for a really small application. It could take a lot longer for a really large application. It's going to depend on the size and complexity of the app. As the scan is running, you can see the progress over in the console. Once the scan finishes, you can click on the scan's title and then go down into the scan to see the results. So here we see the results are sorted by severity with all of the high criticalities at the top and then the medium flows and informationals will proceed after that. Let's take another look at that command. So again, it was docker run, and then we used the dash dash rm to get rid of the stackhawk container once the scan was complete. And dash v usually is verbose, but in this case, it's volume. And this is how we passed the stackhawk.yaml file over. Remember the stackhawk.yaml file was in this directory here. So we mount our local directory over to the special hawk directory on the container. Then we have the dash E option for environment variables where we passed our API key by setting API underscore key equal to our API key. It's redacted here, but you would just paste the string that you got out of your settings by clicking on your account here and then going to settings and getting your API key. In this case, I used an optional feature of creating a virtual host because this particular application is virtual host sensitive. So I essentially create a record in the Etsy host file on the container by using the add host feature to map matilda.local to 127.001. Your application may not need that. I also chose the default option of letting the scanner use the host network. So that's my local network where the Docker containers are running, which is just gonna have all the traffic going over localhost. That's gonna be a common option. And then the version of the Stackhawk scanner that I used off of Docker Hub is just the latest version, which if you're happy with always using the latest version, that's a good choice. If you wanna minimize changes between scans, you could pin to a particular version by choosing one of the versions on Docker Hub and hard coding that version instead of saying latest. I've noticed that the later versions of the scanner tend to take longer each time because they keep adding new features, new checks. So the reports have more findings on them and the scans take longer each time that I upgrade to a newer version, but I'm also getting more information and there's more vulnerability checks being done each time. 
and it does seem to be uh, quite a bit of development going on because pretty much every week there's new features added into the scan. So hopefully this helps you get started with using a tool like Stackhawk to do scans of your container-based or host-based applications and integrating those results into other tool sets.